Howdy, this is Ryan, and in October I released a song called Fallback featuring Adam Daylight, which is probably my favorite song I've released. And because of that, I wanted to do a little video just breaking down how I produced it. Things I like to do when I'm producing, things that I add, why I add them, how I add them. I've had a lot of people asking me how I produce my music in general, like not just this song, so I, I thought this would be a good video to kind of give insight. And uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. I'm chasing all the lights that cut the black And everybody thinks I'm crazy not going back So the first thing I ever did for the song was I hate saying drop. Basically, I was scrolling through splice sounds in bed one day, and you know when like you're like you're just you keep scrolling, you keep pressing the down arrow key, and you're just like, okay, I need, I need. There was this one moment where there was a lot of samples that sounded really good together, like rhythmically, but also melodically, and I was like, oh, what if I made a song that just sounded like you were just putting a bunch of random stuff together? And so that's where the whole premise of the song started. But yeah, so I just downloaded a bunch of splice sounds and I just put them all together and made this. So the central piece of that section would be that little Daft Punkish lead. That came from a splice loop that had really sustained notes that I didn't want, so I just kind of chopped it up. It came from this. So obviously I didn't really care about that on its own, so I just chopped it up and made it. Ryan E. <laughs> and the same can pretty much be said for the rest of the samples, but everything else was made to fit that main top line. My favorite part about that is that one little it just kind of gives your ears a break from all the rhythmic choppy stuff and it kind of gives you a place to go home for a couple seconds. It, it takes you out and it takes you right back in afterwards. So so a lot of what I do is playing with sustain and release and you, I mean, you hear that in a lot of the stuff I do. There's these little vocal chops I made. I forget exactly where they're from because I already bounced the, the thing, but I do know that it was from Splice. Splice contributed to, I think, 85% of the project. That's the thing about using samples is that, you know, you can use samples all you want. I like a lot of what I do is using samples, but it's just finding ways to make it your own. Like that main Daft Punkish lead was all sustained notes and I just made it tiny little pieces. For the people who like to ask about my chord progressions, this part's for you. Let's go to the chords in the intro. Taking back. So if you want to know exactly what those chords are, here they are. D6 add 9 over E, E9, A minor 11 over C, D6 add 9 over E, C sharp minor 11 over E, A minor 11, B7. So lots of sevenths, lots of add nines. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> In terms of how I go about structuring my chords, I'm not really relying on music theory too much because basically what I do is I put notes close together that are still in the same key of whatever chord it is. So if it's like an E minor, I'll pick notes that are in E minor, but I'll put them really close to each other. So it kind of gives you that, I don't want to say dissonance because it's still in key. I, I would call it harmonic dissonance. I don't know what the actual term is called. Everything that I'm doing is by ear, by the way. So it's not like, it's not like I'm a thesaurus for music theory terms, but that's pretty much it. Oh, and my phone just fell off my chair. So that's the thing is that that big impact of the intro, like the, it takes you right into that spacious, like, whoa, where am I kind of vibe. And I, I, I just, really, I really like that. And then of course to continue on with that section in the second half, there's that little lead. Oh, and then this little extra lead. So here's the chords for the chorus. C major 9, A minor 11 over D, 
E minor 11. C, but C sharp minor over 9. C6 add 9 over A. A6 add 9 over F sharp. B7. And yeah. You can tell that it's kind of hard to like keep track of the <laughs> chords like I started. Now the whistle in the chorus is a sample that I recorded, I want to say like two or three years ago. I think it's actually the same one that I used in an old EP I did, but I resampled it and did a bunch of different notes, pitch automations, stuff like that to kind of keep it dynamic, I guess. My favorite section besides the drop is the second verse because it takes what the first verse and like the intro had but it just takes it into a completely different world and it gives it that that funk energy Found a new break. especially that little drum fill like the Gang tired of yesterday Found a new break So if you're trying to make like really funky bass lines, sometimes I'll do a little octave up filler notes, and then I'll do really short staccato, like these notes here, right? That's actually contributing a whole lot to the rhythmic. But the whole reason why that section hits the way it does is that little guitar, like the... So yeah, it's taking an already made guitar loop and then just re-looping it by putting it into a different rhythm. And that's the thing about creative sampling is that you're you're taking stuff that was already made, but you're repurposing it and you're making it for a completely different context. And that's what I love about it. And then the whistles from the chorus came back in the second verse. And I, I didn't that was actually an accident. I put that there by mistake, but then I played it and I was like, wait a minute, that really goes with the chords. Honestly, don't be surprised if I just like stop making electronic music and just go straight into pop because oh my god. So I'm not going to dive deep into the second drop because it's pretty much the same except for different fills except it just kind of keeps it fresh. And even though there's other fills that kind of make it a little bit different, that was the one thing that I put in that I was like this really so the vocals were mainly mixed in a separate session. Um, basically, the way that me and Adam did vocals was, or I think over the span of three days, we were on Discord calls like all day, just writing, recording, and just sending files back and forth. I think we transferred over like like 20 different Google Drive folders just of takes. I had him do like 10 different takes for each section because I wanted to do this thing where you have the main vocal up front and then you have two other vocals, but it's like one's left, one's right but they're all different takes, right? So it's slightly different, but it creates that stereo width. It's a common thing that like is used in pop music and just vocals in general. So this is pretty much the layout for when I was doing the vocal mixing. <laughs> so this is where I did all the comping and then all the, all the stemming for each vocal take, where then he would take them and go into his own project and do vocal processing. So he'd, he would tune them, he would add some saturation, some de -esser. He did that stuff, he sent it back to me, I put it into the original project of the song, and, you know, the rest is, yeah. It, it's a whole lot of mumble jumble. The process was very, very complicated, but it was really fun. Um, so he was just so chill about everything, and he was, he was a lot of fun to work with. It wasn't really stressful, it was just, we were having fun for three days just recording and stuff, so, um, yeah. That's how the song was pretty much made, so I hope this kind of helped give insight on the track, but then also my process. It's very disorganized, <laughs> I'm very chaotic, but uh, yeah, we, but we make, we, uh, we make do, so. By the way, if you like this shirt, you can go to fanlink.2 slash outreach, get yourself one of these. It's, uh, it's uh, still available, and it's, it's swaggy, I hate that I just said that. Um, but yeah, see ya. Gang tired of yesterday Found a new breakaway